I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Josh Saunders. We are the Pop Culturists, and thanks to Nintendo Australia, I've been spending the last week with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on the Nintendo Switch. I so I've never played Xenoblade Chronicles before, so this no, is... Uh, oh. I haven't played the other two. So the other two, we had uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 1 2011 on the Wii. We had Xenoblade Chronicles X 2015 on the Wii U. Oh, okay. This is the third installment in the franchise. So yeah. I was going to say, because I've never played it. I think you have. No, tell, no. Tell, tell me what the Xenoblade Chronicles universe is. But okay, cool. Can't tell you, can't tell you. So this is set, from, now from what I'm aware, from what I've seen, this mm-hmm. is a completely separate story to anything else. You don't have to have played the other games to get what's going on. There might be a few Easter egg and hints and references here and there, but you don't need to have any experience with the other ones to jump into this one. That's bonus. So the word, the story takes place on, in a, on a, a planet, a world called Ulrest. Now, in this world, uh, civilization is struggling. Not a lot of people left. And everyone lives in the sky, in the clouds. On Cloud these, City, it's like Bespin. On these huge uh, creatures called Titans. Not like Bespin. Not like Bespin at all. So you're on Titans in the clouds, yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> that's, that's what you, and all your provinces, like your regions and all of that, are on the backs of other Titans. So they okay. come in many shapes and sizes. You know, you start with a Titan. This is going to be spoiler-free. Uh, everything I'll talk about, well, you probably will have seen in previews and trailers and yep. all that. Um I don't think this will benefit from any spoils at all. Okay. So you you have a Titan that, like, small Titan that you travel around the world on, but then there are whole... So you, do you, like, drive the Titan? No. It's like, like, can a, you control where it goes? Or it just no, kind of no, it's around? just part of the story, okay. and then you kind of go okay. point A to point B. But then the other provinces are gigantic Titans, as in, think like a, a, zone, think like a zone, like an area. Think Hyrule, mm-hmm. but it's actually in the sky on the back of a Titan that's kind of just swimming through the sky. Oh, damn. Yeah. So the problem that the world of Alres is having is that the Titans are starting to die out. Meaning, you know, that for whatever reason, the underground, the regular service world, not inhabitable. Mm-hmm. So you took to the skies. Skies are soon not going to be inhabitable. So you're in a bit of a pickle. Mm. So the idea of the game is you as Rex, the main character, trying to find Elysium, which is essentially the paradise for mankind. Okay, good. We're glad we're not trying to find the movie with uh, Matt Damon, I believe. I don't know. <laughs> don't like he's on a search for a Blu-ray copy of Elysium starring Matt Damon. <laughs> so that that's the premise of the story. All right, yeah? cool. I so like yours better. You, you look out. You you're just trying to find sal- salvation. Yeah, okay. I guess you could call it. And along your travels, you are you by trade are a scavenger. So okay. you will dive off your Titan through the clouds to the service world, scavenge. You know, f- you know, loot some things, scavenge some things, get back up there and go trade all that stuff in. Okay. That's essentially what you are. You're a scavenger. That plays into the game in other ways later as well but you get hired by this group to go deeper than anyone's ever gone before you go you like into the ocean so you go like clouds Ooh. ground ocean you oh go wow real fucking deep where you find this group is after a blade called pyra and our blade is a character i'll get into more of that in a minute called pyra who's known as the aegis and for some reason she's super super important and this bad guy these bad guys want her okay. on their side rex says no rex takes her they get away and the adventure begins. So bla- blades are in co- in the way the world is structured is that you are called a driver, and then each driver has a blade. Now think of a blade as a persona, right? Okay. But instead of you know you summoning them and they do the thing and fuck off, they follow you through combat and they're sentient. They speak with you. They converse. Um, they're as much a person slash creature as anything else on okay. the planet. So throughout the game, you'll unlock more blades, mm-hmm. which you can switch between to have in combat. And each different blade has, gives you different abilities, different uh, acts, uh, arts you can use in okay. battle. Arts are essentially your skills. You can swap between blades in battle. So whichever one's following you, you can swap between being a tank, a healer, and a DPS, the mm-hmm. holy trinity of, of MMOs. Very so, nice. Because it is a, a party-based combat system where you can have up to three other, two other, so three total in your party and their blades all in combat. The blades are really cool in the way that, you know, with... I'm going to use the Persona comparison because it's probably the easiest way to get it across. And I might be able to understand it. And you can understand it. But in the way that uh, blades are created, you find core crystals out in the world. This is an Mm. item that you use and you bind with that core crystal and depending on what ingredients you use as your binding, that's the kind of blade you're going to get. Okay. There are rare blades, uncommon blades super common blades i've already had a few double ups in the early game as it is uh but yeah they they get a cool cut scene when you make them and then they speak to you and then they converse with you while you're out in the world as well so it's not like they're so kind of like a companion pretty much a companion yeah and i haven't uh, my only concern would be because there's 
a lot of blades, like fucking heaps of blades, that there'll be obviously be a few like ones that don't really contribute anything to anything. They're just kind of there. And then you have the blades that are actually part of the story, like Pyra, mm-hmm. where they are in the cutscenes and they're talking with you and pushing the story forward as well. But the blades can all be customized. You can equip them. They've got their own skill trees. They're useful out in the world if like you're exploring the open world and there's a big log blocking your, your path if a blade is a pyromancer they can incinerate the log and you can keep going so there's all kind of obstacles in the world can you interchange blades while you're out and about yes on the fly so if you happen to have one that's a pyromancer but you come across a big rock and you're like oh well, i'm gonna switch it out for this guy that can punch rocks yep okay yes you can uh certain herbs you can only pick if a blade has like a high botany skill you know, all that all that kind of stuff you can swap you can have three blades bound to you at a time and during combat, you can swap them in and out. So combat's really dynamic. Is it turn-based, real-time? No, it's real-time combat. Okay. Uh, it's, an, it's dubbed an action RPG. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's real-time combat. And the combat, initially I was like, and this is a bit dull. It's just kind of auto-attacking. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and as you auto-attack your arts, your abilities charge up. And then, you know, they charge up and you go, I'll use that one now. And for the first probably two or three hours, I was like, this combat's really kind of lacking. I was fucking wrong. <laughs> Oh, so you turned wrong. off the auto and then no no fun. no it's as, as you progress through probably the first five hours of the game certain story beats give you new things to do in combat mm-hmm. where it ends up being you're fucking comboing this and that and using your super ability and then swapping the other blade out to use their super ability on it while they're debuffed the enemy's debuffed by the first super ability and those super abilities fuse to do extra damage to the enemy mm-hmm. but there's just a lot more to combat than there is on surface level uh, timing your abilities in combat, like, you know, when you hit an auto attack, if you hit an ability at the same time, so timing, uh, it's powered up and does a lot more damage. Okay. So you do have to pay attention in combat. You can't just kind of, you know, waggle your dick around and hope <laughs> for the best. So with, with the combat, like I said, there's probably five different kinds of combos you can do, but they're all interchangeable depending what blade you have, what arts you have, what blade you can switch to, who's in your party, who can do what. And it's really kind of up to your imagination how to string all these together. It makes combat really dynamic and really fun. The game's fucking hard. Okay. It's hard. Oh, it's like how hard we're <laughs> like, talking. I'm at, I'm at a point in the story where I don't have my party members with me. I'm just by myself with my blade. Oh, God. <clears throat> um, same level monsters I'm having trouble just taking on one at a time (laughs) but I'm probably not supposed to be where I am because I've spent a lot of time just dicking about yeah and probably going places I'm not supposed to go yet so in that case is it sort of an open ended story you can sort of wander around yeah, it's, it's open world in the sense that you've got your, your fast travel between you know places you've been to and you know because each each zone is on the back of a titan uh, they're enclosed in a way, but they're also open. Like that whole area is just yours to go and explore. Mm. And there are stuff you can't get to now, but you'll have to come back later in the game to get through that part. There'll be obstacles you can't clear because you're not a high enough level. So there is reason to go back to previous zones to get to places you couldn't go before. Okay. Well, the same goes if you had different blades. Like if you didn't have that exactly. blade, you can go back. Yeah, and if I didn't have a blade with this ability, then <clears throat> I'll get it later. I'll come back later and do whatever there is to. <clears throat> but the world's not safe. It's not safe to just run around. Messed up all the time. The area I was in has level 15 to 20 Mm -hmm. uh, creatures in it, enemies. And run along. And all of a sudden, this huge gorilla with a lion's mane just comes smashing out (laughs) of this mountain. And it's a good, I don't know, because my character probably 25 meters high. And it's level 86. (laughs) What? I saw it. And because the level doesn't pop up till you win a certain distance, I'm like oh fucking oath I'm like yeah bring it level 86 and then it has a little uh, like shadow icon around it which means it's an elite on top of its level as well can you run away yes and obviously we were unsuccessful I skip travelled I fast travelled because (laughs) because it was sprinting at me and by the time I managed to like I wouldn't have been able to get out of its line of path. You know how when in movies when something really, really big is falling and everyone's like running away from it instead yeah. of running sideways? Yeah. That whole thing. Like, did you, did you, and, and you've gone... Nah. Yeah, pretty much. Just I mean, fast <laughs> travel. So I'll pull up my notes because there's a lot to... Okay, well, while about. you talk about that, so how does the game look? Beautiful. Yeah? Absolutely stunning. I'd argue... I would argue that the visuals are better than Breath of the Wild. Whoa. Now, it has had nearly a year more in, of development into it. But 
What I mean by that is <clears throat> Breath of the Wild, while it is gorgeous, is also there is a lot of open space, and you've touched on this before. There's a lot of kind of nothing in mm. an area. You know, you, you go point A to point B, and you see there'll be times where you're just walking through an open field and, like, nothing really happens. Because all the zones here on the back of a Titan, everything is packed. Like, it's everything's kind of... It's dense. It's dense, yeah. You, I think CD Projekt Red had a quote when they were making The Witcher 3, is you should not walk longer than 30 seconds without finding something interesting to do. Yeah. And I think Xenoblade's kind of taken that upon itself as well because, because the worlds are enclosed only so many places you can go but because it's not rendering this massive massive world all at once so even though it is technically an open world game it's not rendering the whole world at the same time so i think it benefits from having everything so dense in a packed smaller area the map size has been compared to being equivalent to xenoblade 1 difference being with xenoblade 1 is this is what i've read because i haven't played it is that a lot of xenoblade 1's uh land mass was water mm -hmm. so you didn't really get to travel all of that either so while so, it is about yeah. the same size there is m more space for you to actually go and do things Very interesting uh, but it looks gorgeous when when i got to the first giant titan it's in chapter two i didn't know i was on a titan you know i had this cut scene and like crashed and stuff and woke up in a forest and i was like like i was thinking this looks fucking rad and then i walked up a hill climbed a ladder climbed a tree did all this shit and then i get to the top and the camera pans out like up to the titan's head i'm like holy fuck i'm on a titan and <laughs> yeah. i'm in the sky yeah. like and it just really it blew my mind because i don't know just the scale i tried to get a screenshot of the titan's head as i was looking up at it but it was so big i couldn't pan the camera up high <laughs> enough. so the sense of scale in the game is incredible are we talking like god of war style sense of scale as Big in up. like you know you know when you play god of war like yeah, yeah, yeah. when they do that zoom out and you just see the scope of what you're climbing pretty much yeah because the the area i'm in now <clears throat> i've probably spent a good four hours just sticking about in this mm. this one on the back of this one titan and i haven't even seen it all yet and this is just on the back of one of the titans and i don't know how many there are because i haven't quite finished it yet how does it run because this sounds pretty taxing I found, like I do with most games on the Switch, handheld. Yep. Uh, I did. I have tried it probably, I don't know, two or three hours on the TV. Yeah. I found it does run better on the handheld. Okay. On the, because there is a lot going on, especially in combat, because you'll have, one, you've got this dense area that you're in, you've got your three drivers, you've got their three blades, and you've got X amount of enemies you know, all these spell effects and everything going off and it looks quite chaotic when you sit back and just look at the screen it's like what the fuck is happening right now once you've played the game and you know the systems you can you know what's happening but from the outside looking at it you must be like this is a fuck clusterfuck of, of, of whatever um definitely runs better on the handheld okay i did have one of the towns i was in very very dense very packed very beautiful perfect on the handheld put it on the tv and i I'm not one for at frames per second, but mm -hmm. I did notice a little bit of a drop in there. Okay. Um, so handheld. So going from the 720 to the 1080 sort of gave it a little bit of a yeah, bit of a oomph yeah. And um, now the last thing I want to talk about. Okay. Is the music. Oh. You know I'm big on music. Ah, uh, you are huge on music. You are a man that I know. We'll sit there and listen to game soundtracks. Definitely. And, and up until this point of the year, I thought Persona Five would take best soundtrack. I think this is better. Oh. See, what they've done, they've got multiple composers doing the music for this game who have all worked on previous Xenoblade, uh, Nier Automata, which has an acclaimed soundtrack. Yeah, apparently well. it's huge. Um, and the first Xenoblade soundtrack was very well received too. But what they've done is they've got, like, you, Mr. Sorry, I don't know all the names because there's a lot. It's like, you, Mr. Composer, you work on the, the field music. Mm -hmm. You, you work on the battle music. You, you work on the boss music. So everything... Uh, what's what sort of consistency mm -hmm. like when you're out in the field even though the music's changing depending on what area you're in it's made by the same person so you get their kind of tone and their feel to the area but having, uh, so are you so are you being hyperbolic in terms of there's three different composers or no there's more than that okay so how does that in terms of consistency wouldn't they clearly have different sounds but what they did during development is they'd have regular meetings okay where they'd all sit down and discuss what they're doing so they can bounce off each other let the others know what they're doing so the other one can make sure that their theme fits in with that and everything mm. like that so every, everything just flows really nicely the music is it's fucking phenomenal it is it's a shame that xenoblade 2 came out so late in the year because it's not going to be eligible 
because the Game of the Year awards have already gone up at this point. Nominations, yeah. The nominations have gone up, so it's too late for Xenoblade to be a part of that. But I am dead set this would have been in five or six different categories. And music would have been one of them, and I reckon it would have had a very, very strong chance of taking it. Speaking of Game uh, game Awards, Mm. where does this fit in your year of gaming for 2017? Well, we had our discussion off camera couple of weeks ago you know what we're leaning towards you know all the big games are out for the year let's start talking about what we're thinking and where yeah. we're heading and all of that my list is out the fucking window because <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> in no particular order there was persona horizon. horizon and a couple others uh but this xenoblade 2 is just shot straight into like top three at least and i haven't finished it yet mm. so who knows where it's going to go whether it's going to drag later on or anything like that um but so far I just, one thing I forgot to mention the story mm-hmm. it's quite a dark story but it's given in it's presented in such a a light hearted fashion that you don't feel depressed while you're playing okay, it I've good. gotten a few genu- genuine laughs out of it smiles and all that and I'm not not even that attached to the characters yet because I haven't put in the 100 hours or plus that you can yet um, but it's just it takes me right back to playing like the PS2 Final Fantasy games for the first time where you put in the disc it boots up and straight away you go Jesus, like you get that feeling, yeah. like like I'm in, like this is just magic. Like this is a world. This is a world, and I feel a part of it. And like Persona didn't get Persona Five didn't give me that feeling because it's a very very different type of more RPG. grounded. Yeah. Well, it, not only that, well, but grounded in reality compared to like mysticism. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, and it's just the way you know Persona Five plays and everything like that as well. Whereas Xenoblade Two, it's just like the JRPGs of old, just that real spark of of just life in the world awesome it's definitely in my top three i want to finish it so i can put a put a pin in it mm. but it's fucking rad i'm loving my time and i think that's attributed to what i've tried to do this year is not get caught up in trailers and re- watching preview events so i didn't watch I've, all i watched for xenoblade chronicles 2 was the initial launch trailer from the direct before the switch launched mm-hmm nothing else since then and I know they had a direct a few weeks ago they've had other story trailers pop up they've had other trailers pop up I haven't watched shit and I found throughout the whole year any game I've done that for I've enjoyed a lot more because I've been taken aback Mm -hmm. because everything is new it's not like oh that's that bit that's that character I saw in the trailer it's all just fresh I highly recommend doing that Uh, if you can I do and I don't we got The Last Jedi coming out soon I've watched one trailer I haven't watched any of the trailers nothing I'm I'm going in blind and i think sorry, it's, it's a side conversation yeah, sorry side conversation um <clears throat> i don't know I've, just, I've found this year more enjoyable for stuff that i want when i haven't gone balls deep before it's even out yet all right, all right. so final comments it's just it xenoblade chronicles 2 just captures that that magic jrpg feeling like like a game i haven't played for like 10 years like I booted it up and I was at the menu screen and I hit start game and I got the first cut scene and I straight away I just went like wow yeah. like what is this little like my heart's like <laughs> like what is fucking happening right now it's just it's just a real magical journey so far so far yeah I'll, we'll come back to it at some point um, it's a really magical journey and it's such an amazing way for Nintendo to top off their first year with the Switch as well. Yeah, they've had Nintendo has had a consistently solid release it's since March. One, yeah, once a month they've had once a first month they've, they've had a good game. first party or a quality third party. Yeah, and I by the sounds of it, this really tops off Nintendo's. It's year. just yeah, just really just just like the cherry on the cake. It's yeah. just like we've had Splatoon and Arms and we've had Mario and we've had Zelda, all these big franchises. It's like, bing, try this one out as well, and you should. Because it's fucking great. I love it so much. Anyways, that is our, so I guess, first impressions. First impressions. Review in progress. Because yeah. this game is huge by the sounds. Well, one, we don't score things anymore. Because I think, well, we think numbers are redundant. Two, I'm not comfortable giving final thoughts yet. Because I reckon this will be at least 100 hours plus, And I haven't done that yet. So I want to make sure I give it all the, give it the attention it deserves before giving those big final thoughts mm. on it. But at this stage, the pop culture has given it that two thumbs up. So that's that's our first impression discussion on Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on the Nintendo Switch. It is out today. Bam. Go pick it up. Enjoy. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Josh Horners. I know how to end it. Go buy it, <laughs> damn it. <laughs>